We've been providing therapeutic foster care services here at YouthNet uh, directly for kids in therapeutic foster care in foster homes for a little over a year now. Before that time, I had been fortunate enough to work with a group of six individuals who met every week for almost a year before this program ever began. And uh, we talked about you know, what we wanted a therapeutic foster care program to look like. Four of us are working uh, within the therapeutic uh, foster program and we're actually doing the work that we had talked so, uh, so much about and we have had the opportunity to really put our values into practice and uh, to really set up a, a, an organization or a program and a system uh, that we uh, feel confidently about. And we're excited to bring those ideas and um, that problem solving within foster care here in our communities and to get other people on board with uh, the things that we had talked about and just being a part of a dynamic group that can really make some changes. So I just want to talk, about, talk a little bit about those values that, that we came up with and the values that we have as a whole for our, all of our foster care programs. The biggest one, the, the most overarching program value that we have is developmental relationships. You know, if we can express care, challenge growth, provide support, share power, and expand possibilities with each of our youth, and, you know, if we do all of those things, we are giving more opportunities and giving them uh, chances to, to heal and a chance to be successful. Um, but obviously that's harder to do uh, than it is to say, uh, but it's something that's at the forefront of our minds all of the time and it's something that we're talking with our foster parents about. It's something that we're talking with um, as, as a group for all of our staff members all of the time. Just a very uh, relationship-based uh, program in general, not just with the kids, but also relationships with our foster parents, relationships with uh, other providers, relationships with the people uh, within um, the department that we work with, uh, work so closely with. So relationships is, is um, just the foundation of everything that we do. And uh, it really is also the foundation of trauma-informed care. And you know, it's about having relationships with you know, kids that have a difficult time reciprocating um, because of the challenges that they've been through. A lot of times when I talk to people about the work that we do, you know, their initial response is, oh man, that must just be really difficult work. And you know, at, at times it's difficult. I mean, the, the kids' stories and backgrounds and you know, some of the, the things that we do deal with uh, can, are, are, are challenging to be sure, um, but you know, I've long thought and that the, the work with these kids is, is nothing uh, short of, of a privilege and all of the, the people within our, our programs just, just feel the same way that you know, we are just grateful to have the opportunity to make connections with, with these kids. They're, they're such great kids. They are, they're such great kids that have great talents and great potential and, you know, trying to remove barriers as best we can for them and help try to, to teach them about uh, positive relationship and, and things like that. It's, it's just a you know, no better word than a, than a privilege and, and an honor to, to work with these kids. So some of the other things that we had talked about as a group that we just thought was really important and, uh, you know, at times difficult to actually provide in service. Normalcy is something that came up all of the time. You know, we had talked a lot about how difficult it is to provide a, a normal experience or, or as normal of an experience as we can for a kid in foster care. Foster care is an extremely abnormal circumstance and so what, can, what kinds of things can we do to allow these kids to have as normal of a childhood as possible and you know really get them closer to permanency and get them out of foster care and uh, cared for within a family like within a family setting. Some of the things that we talk about is you know being able to spend the night at kids home uh, at friends houses or um, going on, you know, vacations and, 
you know, doing all and joining groups and doing sports and all of that kind of stuff. And that seems obvious, but a lot of times our kids don't want to participate in a lot of those uh, activities. They just don't feel like, uh, or they, they feel like they're a little bit different uh, at times. And so it's a, it's a challenge. Uh, they don't feel like they fit in with those groups. So they need a lot of encouragement. You know, they need people to uh, set up opportunities for them to engage in these kinds of things and uh, it takes a lot of persistence from the adults at times to, to get them you know um, connected to positive uh, peer support groups and things like that also and, and you know other normalcy things like being able to drive that's a, a huge challenge within foster care with liability and um, with insurance and, and things like that that those those things have been difficult at times, but we really go above and beyond to try to give those kinds of opportunities to our kids. Permanency is another uh, one of our values that, that we talk about. Permanency is another one of those things that is easier to, um, you know, do it in concept than to actually uh, do permanency well within an organization. We have um, done a lot of work with intensive family search and really identifying family members and uh, potential people uh, within the kids' lives who want to be a permanent support, whether they want to, whether they can take placement or not. Um, just having more positive adults in these kids' lives who, who know them, know their history, uh, family members who can tell them about when they were two years old, uh, family members who can uh, talk about you know the, the positive people within their families um, and just have relationship. We would like to be able to do intensive family search for all of our youth. Right now we're doing that doing it for um, select uh, kids within our programs. All of our kids can use uh, extra extra supports, extra uh, extra permanent relationships for when they leave our program, uh, when they leave foster care. Um, so making those connections is, is really important. Another value that we uh, talk a lot about is creating a uh, fostering community network. Creating a network of uh, families, of staff, of volunteers, of people that want to help with the, the, the challenges uh, of foster care within our local communities. We want to you know, have a uh, robust uh, uh, support system within our local communities here so when kids do get um, need placement when they do come into care that we have mm -hmm. the ability to care for these kids within our communities that they're not being sent to other communities um, that they're not being sent um, not only out of their community but sometimes out of their county sometimes out of you know their region sometimes out of the state uh, we can do a lot better job of, of keeping kids here in our communities. If we have a, you know, a, fo a fostering community of caregivers and staff and volunteers and people that uh, really want to come together to support this, pr this program and, and this network, we can do a lot better in keeping our kids here where they don't have to change schools. They don't have to make all new relationships and they don't start from, from zero. Uh, in terms of you know who they know and where they've been, um, so that's another value that we talk about a lot. Those are a few of our our main values. And uh, if you have any questions or if you have uh, a, a, a desire to be a part of this fostering network or fostering community, please uh, get a hold of us. Uh, you can contact us through the website. You can contact us by phone. Social media is always uh, an easy way to contact us and hope to hear from you. Thank you.